Hello everyone, welcome to Diagnose It. Today we have this spot case and we are to make the diagnosis with this chest x-ray that is given. So with this x-ray, let's discuss it in the regular way. Firstly starting with our A. Discussing about the airway, you can see this is the trachea that I am outlining here, this. And this is a little bit left deviation. There is this left deviation of the trachea which is not normal. So there is this left tracheal deviation. Next is about this B and uh, B is basically for bones and in the bones most of it is quite normal but you can see there is this this there is a dislocation of this uh, sternoclavicular joint which is very mild and uh, yeah there is a question for you comment in the box below what is this and what is this what you can see here next is discussing about the bronchial markings and uh, the lung you can see in this area, this is the normal bronchial markings that are basically showing the presence of lung. So this is the lung, normal bronchial markings. And here, this area, this uh, outer area that I am outlining, this is looking more black as compared to this. And there are no bronchovascular markings. So what this is showing that there is air at this place. So this presence of air in the thorax or between the two layers of pleura visceral and parietal layer of pleura this is called as pneumothorax now coming to the cardiac shadow you can see there is this is a cardiac shadow and it is kind of a shifted cardiac shadow so the mediastinum is shifted towards the left so there is left shift of mediastinum also diaphragm d4 diaphragm and diaphragm is looking basically normal and e is everything else or you can say any other anomaly that you can see in the x-ray and uh, apart from this presence of pneumothorax here and this sternoclavicular joint dislocation and uh, these two things we can see that this is uh, everything else in this x-ray is quite normal so the diagnosis for this x-ray the major diagnosis is pneumothorax and this is right-sided pneumothorax now let's discuss a bit about this pneumothorax. So what is this pneumothorax? Uh, it basically means there is air that is present between the two layers of pleura. So how air can enter in the pleural space? Well, this can occur by two mechanisms. One is it can enter like uh, this is the parietal pleura and this is the visceral pleura. It can enter by the parietal pleura or it can enter by the visceral pleura. So by the parietal pleura, it can enter due to any and from the visceral pleura, it can enter due to any injury to the visceral pleura and that is due to any rupture of bulla or due to any secondary lung etiology or any infectious disease inside the lung so any pathology in the lung this basically leads to the pneumothorax due to the rupture of or injury of the visceral pleura the injury from the outside or trauma basically the road traffic accidents that leads to this pneumothorax due to the injury to this parietal pleura it can also be divided as uh, primary and secondary primary basically means that uh, uh, there is no lung pathology that is involved and uh, secondary means that if the pneumothorax is occurring due to any existing lung pathology it can also be divided as traumatic and atraumatic when it is associated with trauma and it when it is not associated with trauma it can also be divided as like uh, simple pneumothorax other is this open pneumothorax and this tension pneumothorax so what about these in the open pneumothorax there is an open wound that is present this is basically sucking air between the two layers of pleura and in this simple pneumothorax what this means that there is presence of air between the two layers of pleura and this is basically not causing any mediastinal shift and in the tension pneumothorax this basically means that uh, when the simple pneumothorax or any open pneumothorax when this is causing mediastinal shift and leads to pressure over the heart and over the blood vessels in the mediastinal region then this leads to development of uh, this tension pneumothorax and this is a life-threatening condition let's come to the causes causes of this pneumothorax uh, the first one is the trauma and the trauma can be due to road traffic accidents or due to iatrogenic causes like uh, in cases of uh, taking biopsy from the lung in cases of doing tracheostomy or uh, venous catheter insertion or giving intercostal nerve block these are the basically causes of iatrogenic pneumothorax now uh, about the secondary pneumothorax about the disease associated with this uh, mainly the lung pathology like this COPD or asthma and uh, other lung infections like necrotizing pneumonia, tuberculosis, sarcoidosis is also associated with this and collagen vascular disease is basically causing this pleura to be weak. So this also leads to development of this pneumothorax. Now what happens is like uh, firstly suppose if there is a wound over the chest wall then 
as we know uh, between the two layers of pleura there is negative pressure and this is basically for helping in the respiration and uh, when there is negative pressure then due to the wound air get sucked inside this pleural cavity and to normalize the pressure uh, when the air gets inside this basically increase the pressure and to normalize the pressure this basically equates with the pressure that is inside the lung so this basically acts on the lung and uh, basically leads to the collapse of the lung when the amount of air that is accumulating in this pleural space is as it can compress the lung and uh, leads to shifting of mediastinum then this basically leads to development of tension pneumothorax and it is a kind of life threatening condition well now let's come to the symptoms by what symptoms the patient usually presents the first symptoms is usually uh, this dyspnea the patient can present with dyspnea in small pneumothorax the patient can be even asymptomatic also and in cases of large pneumothorax the patient present with chest pain shortness of breath and dyspnea is quite severe because when this uh, pneumothorax start increasing in size then the dyspnea and the respiratory discomfort to the patient that started increasing and with time this can be a life threatening condition because it can compress the vessels in the mediastinum and due to compression of the vessels this basically decrease the venous return to the heart due to which it causes uh, tachycardia and uh, hypotension and due to the obstruction of those vessels this basically increase the jugular venous pressure and uh, this basically in the end may lead to cardiac arrest and uh, respiratory failure so these are basically the causes of death in this pneumothorax now let's come to the diagnosis part and for the diagnosis the first investigation that we go for is this x-ray the chest x-ray and uh, in nowadays this e fast and this e fast basically means that extended focused assessment sonography for trauma so this basically is an investigation that is currently used in some places and uh, but the current investigation of choice is this x-ray and i have told you about the findings in this x-ray these are just the uh, normal findings but if in case uh, when you cannot detect this pneumothorax with the x-ray this is called as occult pneumothorax and for that you can also go for the ct scan so this is about the diagnosis now let's come to the treatment part for the treatment in the emergency setting the first thing that to that is to be done is this needle thoracostomy or we can say that needle decompression and this needle decompression it is done in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line so after this needle decompression when the patient gets stabilized then after that we go for this uh, uh, tube insertion this icd tube intercostal drainage tube this is inserted in the fifth intercostal space anterior to mid axillary line so this is the place for insertion of intercostal drainage tube and uh, if in case there is this open wound to the chest cavity then this is taped from the three sides like suppose this is a wound and uh, we just tape it from the three sides so this is basically we create a valve kind of mechanism and due to this valve the air cannot come in from any side so when the air tries to come in this basically uh, this place this uh, gauge piece or we just or the cloth by which we covered it this basically gets stuck and this uh, and due to it the air cannot come inside but when the air tries to go outside then this get opened up and uh, this air start uh, coming out and uh, in the end if nothing works there is an indication for surgery like video assisted thoracoscopic surgery this is basically the end option after trying all other options like uh, icd tube insertion and even after waiting for a lot of time the patient is still symptomatic then after that this video assisted thoracoscopic surgery and also in cases of secondary pneumothorax like if the pathology is in the visceral pleura then also this uh, video assisted thoracoscopic surgery or thoracotomy can also be done and uh, in the end there is this pleurodesis that can also be done and for the pleurodesis we can go for mechanical pleurodesis in which we basically strip between the two layers of pleura and they get uh, adhered to each other and there is this chemical pleurodesis in which we can use talc we can also use uh, tetracycline minocycline and there are other drugs too that uh, by which we can also go for pleurodesis uh, in the pleurodesis what basically occurs suppose this is the parietal layer of pleura and this is the visceral layer when we inject a substance or we basically deliver a substance between these two layers then uh, due to the inflammatory action or due to the inflammation that occurs due to that substance because that substance acts as a foreign body and due to the inflammation that occurred there there is this adherence of these two layers of pleura this is basically called as pleurodesis and when there is no space between the parietal and visceral layer of pleura then there is no chance of developing pneumothorax so this is the main mechanism of uh, this pleurodesis so this is the just basics about this pneumothorax if you have any questions regarding this then do post it in the comment section below or you can dm me on my instagram handle at diagnose it and uh, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you